This video is going to be cool. We're going to take these three images. The links to download them for free are in the description. And we're going to composite them to make this image. So you know the question. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time. And you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? The quickest way to get these three individual files into a single Photoshop document, instead of copying and pasting and dragging or dropping, select, shift select, all of the images that you want, go up to tools, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. Photoshop will open up each individual image, keeping its original resolution and compressing all the images you decided on into one layered document. See the layers panel? Hit Command or Control Zero to fit in screen. This is our base image. I'll turn that off. This is our guy we'll put in the foreground. And this image is pretty small, but that's okay because what we're going to do is use this image as kind of a, a graffiti image on this plain wall back here. So I'll turn this off. I'll turn the guy back on, select the layer, click, hold, drag, look at the cyan line so I know where I'm releasing it. So I want him on top. Now, right away, I'm going to turn off this background layer for a minute. I want to select just the guy and probably the quickest way to do that is to go over here to the fourth item down and you might have the magic wand tool there or you might have the object selection tool or the quick selection tool. It doesn't really matter. Any of these tools will target the tool panel to give you a select subject button. Click it. Let Photoshop figure it out. Now these commands do much better with color and tone. It has a little problem with some black and white. So see, it didn't get this little area here. Command space bar just to zoom in. And what I'll do is I, I'm already on the quick selection tool. I'll tap the right bracket key to make my brush a little bigger. And I'll just pass over it and see if Photoshop can figure it out. Might be a little too complicated for it. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go over to the lasso tool and choose polygonal lasso. And I'll hold down the alt or option key to deselect. And I'll just kind of click along this cheekbone, double click to close the loop. And that fixed that part. There's one other thing I noticed. It didn't get the zipper. It did pretty good. I'll hold down the shift key to add to the selection. And again, with the polygonal lasso tool, you just keep clicking and dragging and it draws straight lines. I'll hold down the alt or option key to deselect that opening and the same for here. Alt or option, good enough. Command zero to fit in the screen. This looks really good, but I always go into select and mask just to take a quick look, just fine. I'll hit smart radius. I'll drag the radius up just a few pixels. I might smooth this by one. 0.2 to 0.6 on the feather. And I'm going to choose new layer with layer mask under the output. Choose OK. So it automatically turned off the one that I was using. So I'll go ahead and hide this at the very bottom. And now I'll turn down my background layer. So this is my background layer. I'm going to select the guy. Command or Control T. Can't see my bounding box totally. So hit Command and Control 0 to fit in the screen. And I'm going to grab from this corner and just drag up. I'm going to use rule of thirds positioning. I don't want to crop them at the knees but I want to keep his hand in. So that's about as good as I can get. I'll hit C for the crop. I'll grab this bottom and pull up. I know I'm not going to want to come back and use any of this, so I'll make sure to delete crop pixels is checked so my file size will be a bit smaller. I'll hit Enter, and it, Photoshop will disregard all of that stuff. I don't like this little gap right here, so I'll tap inside there again while still on the crop tool and just pull that up. Okay, I like that. We don't see knees. We just see a trench coat. Do you see this line? What the f***? See that real thin line right here? Whenever you're compositing in your original, the image that you brought in doesn't match the format of the image you're pasting into. So if we alt or option click on the mask, command zero to, see that's what's happening. This is the line we're seeing. And the way to fix that, I'm gonna hit command minus just to shrink it. M for the marquee tool. Make sure that I'm on the rectangular marquee tool and just draw a selection, shift delete, fill with black. And remember, you can also go to edit and down to fill. Command D to deselect. So now my mask is matching the format of the base image. I'll click on the eyeball so we don't see that weird line anymore. All right, I want to get this picture behind those guys. So the way I'm going to have to do that is I've got to separate the guys from the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to come over here and grab the new object selection tool. And I'm going to just draw a box around the guys actually probably that bench too, and say, figure it out, Photoshop. Didn't do a bad job. I'm actually going to turn off this eyeball because I want to hold down the shift key and select this one as well. Did really good on this side. 
with what it didn't get, I'll probably just do with a mask. So let's refine this. Go up to select and mask, command space bar so I can zoom in. And this stuff, this part doesn't have to be perfect. I'll choose the actual quick selection tool inside the select and mask dialog box. And I'll just pass over the guy's shirt. So here's the thing. The select subject doesn't do a great job with black and white. It does great with color and tone, but when color's missing, everything is so similar. See how his shirt looks so similar to the background? It can't quite figure it out. Probably the quickest way is whatever tool you like, the pen tool, I if I'm in the selecting mask, the polygon or lasso tool works great. You just select it here, and I wanna add this missing stuff to the selections. I'm just going to click, 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 click. You see what I'm doing? With enough lines, you can actually even make something organic and circular. I'm gonna close that back up, double click, and see how that added it. Now I'm gonna go around and just clean up this whole thing. Now I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key to remove the wall from the selection. See how my cursor is changed to a negative? Six and a half hours later. Okay, once I've gotten to this point, I'll toggle on the radius and smart radius. I'll smooth it by a couple of pixels, feather it by 0 0.2 to 0 0.8. And now I'll put the layer to a new layer with layer mask. Click OK. So now the guys in the bench are on their own layer so that when I turn this on, everything looks the same, right? So I want to pull this graffiti between the layer with this mask so that it will look like it's between. And remember that cyan line shows you where you're about to drop it. See now, hit V for the move tool. This is behind those guys. Now I don't want it to go down into the street or the sidewalk. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to hit Command or Control minus, just shrink everything in screen. While I'm on the, the painting layer, I'll hit Command or Control T to get free transform. And I'll just stretch that up so I get a scale of what's going on. Command minus and scale it some more. Possibly somewhere in this range. I'll hit enter. I'll turn that off for a minute because I need a mask to keep it confined to just this wall. So while I'm looking at the wall, polygonal lasso tool, this would be great. Click once. Come all the way over, click again, come all the way down to the where the wall meets the sidewalk, click again, again, double click to close the loop, turn back on this with the active selection and look at the layers panel. I'm gonna click add layer mask and it's gonna automatically mask for me. And if I disconnect this chain link, cause right now I hit V for the move tool and I move this, do you see how I'm moving that exact shape around? Command or control Z to undo. If I break the link between the image right here, between the image and the mask, I now have the ability, well, right now I'm on the mask. So now I'm moving the mask around the image, which sometimes is useful. Command Z, I don't want to do that here though. I want to reselect the image. This way I can position the image in the window of the mask on this wall to wherever I like. This area here is the, the more exciting. I'm going to choose that. A couple of little problems down here, but we'll, we'll come in and fix that with the mask. I'll just select that mask, hit B for the brush. Small, small brush, zero for 100%, and just paint back in whatever's missing. And remember, this part doesn't have to be exactly Perfect. What the f I know a lot of a lot of you like me want to make everything perfect, but everything doesn't have to be perfect. Command and control zero, command minus. Now I need to see this in black and white. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the very top layer, add our guy back to the front, and above him I'm gonna add the gradient mask just to convert to black and white. It came in the reverse of what I want, so I'll just hit reverse. Perfect. You can also just add a black and white adjustment layer, just something at the very top so everything's in black and white. Now let's take a look at these guys. I think they're a little too dark. So here, I'll, I'll select them. I'll come up to the levels adjustment, click it. I'll hold the Alt or Option key while I hover between that levels adjustment and that image to clip it. And I'll just open up the midtones. See, I'm just brightening just the guys. See, I can make the guys a total silhouette, for graphic element if I wanted, but I'm, I have discrete control over just those guys, which is kind of what I want, because I think they were a little too dark to fit in the scene. Remember, I've got to match this high contrast lighting that's hitting him, which I can pull that down a touch. Now, coming back to this image, the painting, I want it to blend a little better. Not that there was a lot of texture on that wall. So I want to blend this painting into the, the wall. And I think I'm going to try, 
Usually I try overlay or soft light. That tends to work the best. But I think for this particular one, maybe I would go multiply and then I'll adjust the tonality of it by adding a, a levels adjustment layer above that one. Alter option to clip it. So again, coming up to the properties panel that automatically opens, I can make just that painting go completely black. So I get to decide probably something like that. And then I'll fade the opacity of the painting layer just to blend it even more so. And I can come back up here and pull in, you know, the rich blacks, even though I'm fading it back through just to make it look more like a painting. This area looks too low contrast now up above. I, I go, come back to this base layer, polygonal lasso tool, and I'll select above the wall. Click, 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 double click to close the loop. And I'll add a levels adjustment mask just for that top. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So anything I do is only going to be shown in this white area. So let me click on the levels to bring the histogram back. And you can see I'm missing all my white tones. That's why it looks so flat. The quick way is just to bring that white slider to the base of the mountain. And that typically will, will make it look much better. The midpoint always resets to neutral right in between the black and white point. So you can drag that to taste whichever direction you want. I think I'll make my midtones a little darker, something like that. And now let's take a look at just this guy. I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer just for him, clip it to him like we've learned before, and pull down that white output slider. See his cheek right here? I was blown out in relation to the scene. Still believable. Bright, sunny day. It looks like the sun can definitely be coming from this direction based on the shadow. It's more of a noon sun. I'm, I'm giving it the directionality of believing that it could be coming from this direction. I like that. So once you've made your basic global component adjustments to get the contrast and tonality to pretty much match, go to the very top layer and then hit Command Option Shift letter E. It's going to compress everything to the top. I'm going to select everything else by selecting the first thing, holding the shift key, selecting the last thing, hitting command or control G to group it just to clean up my layers panel. I'll hit command or control J to duplicate my new composite original. And then I'm going to pop over to camera raw filter. This is a great place to go and adjust your images. Okay, we see I've got some blown out highlights indicated by the red highlight clipping warning. That's because over here in the histogram, I've got this toggled on. So I need to pull down my highlights to recover those. And I think I would like to, this is a great image to push up the clarity and dehaze texture. Maybe I went a little crazy, a little too far. Pull down the dehaze. I enjoy where this is going, but I want to make sure I don't lose attention on the guy. So I'd probably come over to this adjustment brush, pull up the exposure and the clarity and just make sure I, I give him just a little attention to make sure I don't lose the focus. A little brighter, brighten up the shadows just a touch, maybe pull the clarity down on him specifically to reactivate the basics panel and choose geometry. Click A for automatic just to see if it wants to tweak anything. It doesn't seem to want to tweak anything. Vignette the corners just a touch. Click OK, go back into Photoshop. Six and a half hours later. OK, I like where this is going. I'm going to hit Command or Control J. And I want to see what parts would I want to be really dark. OK, what parts would I want to have more contrast? See, this is all to taste. Let me go back to normal. OK, what I'm going to do is I decided I'm going to burn the midtones, right bracket key of the pavement, just to pull that down a little bit so we really kind of focus Come all the way across there. And then I'm going to burn the shadows. Maybe not 24%, maybe something like 10. There we go. And then I think I want to dodge his face a little bit. Just don't want it to look muddy where we had to pull down that brightness. Brighten that up a touch. Bigger brush. Brighten these guys up a touch. That's too much. Command Z, it gave them a lot of importance. Maybe I'll just brighten them a little bit with the midtones. Yeah. And maybe I'll really throw focus on this guy by doing a couple of clicks with the, the midtone dodge. Keep our eyes going there. Now I'm blowing him out a bit, right? So look how I'm toggling off. I'm controlling the light, and that's what I want you to do. But I went too far with his face. So I would add a layer mask, X to get black back to my foreground. Come back in with B for the brush, painting with black, maybe at 10%, just to pull in a little bit of that face detail. A few clicks, a few clicks, a few clicks. Command Option Shift Letter E to push it all to the top. Probably pop back over to Camera Raw Filter just to give it a final polish. Okay, so go download the images and let me see what you do. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome.
What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>